it's time for. Oh yeah, almost as good as Grace. Well done. Chapter 11 and lesson number 12, the shortest distance from a point to a plane. So let's start off with a point and a plane. So looking at this diagram here, we want to consider the distance going from a fixed point, let's call it P, to a plane, let's call it plane pi. Obviously, the shortest distance going from P down to the plane will not be coming off away at an angle or something like this. The shortest distance from P to plane pi is going to be the perpendicular distance going from P to the plane as you can see here with this black line. So in other words, the shortest distance will be from P down to Q, that point of intersection. Because P, Q is going to be at right angles to the plane, well, it means that that will be parallel to the normal vector. Remember, a normal vector is a vector that is at right angles to the plane. So the normal vector to plane pi will be at right angles to the plane, and if so, well, it's going to be parallel to the vector p, q. So using this information, let's try solving a problem. So let's look at example one. Find the shortest distance from the point p with coordinates 1, 12, negative 8 to plane pi with equation x take away 2y plus 2z equals 6. Now, before you start, a lot of the time I would go off to the side and sketch what we are told. So we're told we have a point, P, and we're told we have a plane, Pi, and we want to work out the shortest distance. So this is what you may sketch. The first thing we could work out, well, we have the equation of the plane. It is 1x take away 2y plus 2z equals 6. And the coefficients of the x, the y, and the z, so the 1, the negative 2, and the 2, that comes from the vector that's normal to the plane. So the first thing that we can write out is that the vector n, our normal vector, will have the components 1, negative 2, 2, just from the coefficients of x, y, and z. And that will be the vector that's normal to plane pi, and therefore a vector that is parallel in the direction of p, q. We can now express the equation of the line p, q in symmetric form. How do we do that? Well, to write the equation of the line in symmetric form, what we need to do is we need to know a point on the line, well, we do. We know this point P. We know it's got the 1, the 12, and the negative 8. And we also need to know a vector that's in the direction of the line. Well, the normal vector is a vector that's in the direction of the line. So we can use this normal vector. And we can use our point, the 1, the 12, and the negative 8, to come up with our symmetric equation. So symmetric form we will have, well, the x1, the y1, and the z1, that is from the point, and the a, the b, and the c is from the direction vector. So we can say then we will have x take away 1 over 1 will equal y take away 12 over negative 2, and that will equal z take away negative 8, so z plus 8, over 2. And that will equal some parameter, let's call it t. So the equation of p2 in symmetric form will be that. After that, where do we go from there? Well, we've got the equation of the line in symmetric form, and we know q is the point of intersection of pq and that plane pi. In order to work out the coordinates of q, well, we have to express the equation of the line pq in parametric form. So to do that, to express pq in parametric form, well, looking back to our symmetric form, which was just this, with the x take away 1 over 1, the y take away 12 over negative 2, and z plus 8 over 2, that was equal to t. We want to rearrange that so we get x equals, y equals, and z equals. So what would x be equal to? Well, just taking the x take away 1 over 1 equals t, multiply both sides by 1. So x take away 1 equals 1t. And then add 1 to both sides will give us x equals t, add 1. Looking at the y take away 12 over negative 2 equals t, multiply both sides by negative 2. So y take away 12 equals negative 2t, and then add 12 to both sides. So you'd have y equals negative 2t, add 12. And with the z add 8 over 2 equals t, once again, multiply both sides by 2. So z plus 8 would equal 2t, and then subtract 8 from both sides. So z would equal 
2t take away 8. So that's going from our symmetric form here to parametric form. The reason we write it in parametric form is because we know that PQ intersects plane pi when, well, that's the equation of the plane, when the x take away 2y plus 2z equals 6. And we know our point Q will have the coordinates x, y, z for some value of t. And we need to find out what that value of t is. So we can replace in the plane equation the x with t add 1, the y with negative 2t add 12, and the z with 2t take away 8. So doing that, that is what you'll get. Multiply out the brackets and simplify will give you 9t take away 39 equals 6, meaning then that 9t will equal 45, so t would equal 5. So we know then that the line PQ intersects plane pi when t is 5, but they also intersect at that point Q. Q. So we can find the coordinates of Q. Well, Q will have an X, a Y, and a Z value. So we can replace T with 5 in order to work out the coordinates of Q. So we can say then X equals T add 1, but we know T is 5 at that point of intersection. So we can say it's 5 add 1, which is 6. So the X coordinate will be 6. The Y value, well, negative T add 12, replace the T once again with 5, and that would give you 2. And Z equals 2T take away 8, and again replace T with 5, meaning then that Z would equal 2. So you know then that that point of intersection, that point Q, will be 6, 2, 2. So we know then point P, going back to the diagram, we know this point P, and we have just worked out what this point Q is. So we know P and we know Q, and now we can work out this distance. How do we go about doing that? Well, if we know P and we know Q, well, we could work out the vector PQ. So PQ will be Q take away P, so we would have 6 take away 1. We'd have 2 take away 12, and we'd have 2 take away negative 8, meaning then that we will have the vector PQ as 5, negative 10, 10. So that's going to be the vector PQ. We want to work out the length of that vector, though, because that length will be the shortest distance from the point down to the plane. So we can work out the magnitude of PQ. And doing that, well, that will be the square root of the 5 squared plus the negative 10 squared plus the 10 squared, which will equal the square root of 225, which we all know is 15. Perfect. So we can say then that the shortest distance from point P to plane pi is therefore 15 units. Woo! Try some of these questions on page 50. Again, there is not a lot, so make sure you practice these. Make sure you know what you're doing. Just go back to them before the exam. Page 50 in the unit 3 booklet. Working out the shortest distance from the point to the plane. Woo! Best of luck. Bye!